The Lord laid this message upon my heart some time ago, and I kind of kept procrastinating, 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 because <laughs> this is way out of my league, way out of my territory. But when God's in it, Amen. He says, when you're weak, He'll be strong. Amen. He says, if you just open up your mouth, I'll fill it. Yes. Amen. That's what I'm praying for this morning. That God would fill my mouth this morning with His words, what He'd have me to say. I learned so much during this time of study. Probably one of the most messages I've, I've, I've probably studied the most out of all. We hear about from in Numbers chapter 15. When you have it, stand to your feet for the reverence reading of the word. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to teach this thing, but if I get excited and go to preaching, just hang on, all right? Just, just hang on. Numbers 15, starting at verse 37, it said this The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, Throughout the generations, to come. You are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lust of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray right now that your words would penetrate every heart in this place. Father God, let it not just be another message, another sermon, another, uh, 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 another teaching in you, Father God. But I pray that it would be life-changing. That not one person would leave this place the way that they came here this morning. But that we would be transformed by the reading and by your word this morning, Father God. Oh, take us to new levels. New depths, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Teach us this morning. Show us your ways. Teach us, Lord God. I praise you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody said, Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The title of the message this morning is The Miracle and Mystery of the Prayer Shawl. See up here, I have a prayer shawl here this morning. And I want to talk to you about it. There's so much that I have learned in this and I want to share that with you today to give you a better understanding. You know, the more that I study and the more that I even I hear Pastor Samuel minister and, and stuff, I realize how much more we need to know and understand about the, uh, in the Old Testament and, and, and the Jewish uh, uh, things that the Lord had taught the people. And that even as we read here this morning, it's for generations to what? Come. To come? Yes. Guess where we're at? We're in the to come part. Yes. Okay, we're still to learn. You say, well, pastor, I'm not Jewish. I beg to differ. How many Christians do we have in the house? How many have said, I have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Amen. You are a grafted Jew. Amen. Amen. You've been grafted into the vine. Yes. And because of that, you receive all the benefits. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yes. You receive all the benefits. Right. Benefits, all the promises yes. are unto you. Yes. And the word even says unto your children's children. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad for the promises yes. this morning? Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about it. If I can, I'm a little nervous. If you can't tell already, I'm a little nervous, but hey, I'm just going to do my best. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
This is called a prayer shawl. And there's other names or interpretations or translations what the what is said even in the Bible. I didn't realize this until I did the study. And now a lot of scriptures make more sense. And you're going to see. That's why I want to share that with you. Because it's going to help you understand scripture. You know, if you've read some things in the Bible, just kind of why they use that word, why they use that. Well, the prayer shawl is throughout the Bible. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you that this morning. It is throughout the Bible. From this time, when he commanded the people to do this, it is from that time on, even into the New Testament. I'm going to show you that this morning. But it's also translated as garment. It's also translated as outer garment. And then it's called a talis. A T-A, and she's got the names up there. A talis, a talit, or a talith. Yes. Okay, these are different names for the prayer shawl, what we know as the Jewish prayer shawl. The word to lift is broken into two words. It's actually two Hebrew words. The first word being tall, which means tent. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read something in the Bible about oh, tents? Yes. Ah. And the last part is if. The if part means little. You put the two two together, it means what? Little tent. <laughs> ah, hang on to that. It gets better. It's called a little tent. Now, each man, each Jewish man was to have his own little tent or prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. Everyone was to have their own. And it also, in the New Testament, it translated as like a, a, a prayer closet. We're going to get into that mm -hmm. as well. So it does talk about, in the New Testament, about mm -hmm. going into your prayer closet. Uh, your own little tent, your own little covering. Now, I'm going to talk about the tassels. Here we see some tassels here. On the end of the garment, he had commanded them to put the tassels on. Other names for tassels in the Bible and through other translation, depending on who you're talking to or who's what, but it's also known as fringes or hem. You ever heard of that word in the Bible? Talking about the hem of his garment. As, as talking about that, the hymn, and the uh, seats, seats, yeah, it's T-S, yeah, that one right there, and that is a Hebrew word for wings. Have you ever heard that before in the Bible, talking about the wings? We actually sung it this morning, under the shadow of his wings. Ah, that just clicked, didn't it? Talking about the wings, talking about these right here, these are wings, Okay. Also, it's known as corners, on the corners. Some versions translated as corners. And it's also known as a zip zip, which means uh, the tassels here. Okay? Now, in this part that we just read here, God gave three commands. Three commands about this outer garment or the prayer shawl. Three commands. The first one is this. To make tassels upon the borders of the garment. Now you'll see on the prayer shawl the borders on all four corners. You will see these tassels on here. All four corners. This one, this one, and this one. All four corners are tassels. And that they were to make tassels upon the borders of the garment on all four corners. Now, something really, really neat here. In each of these tassels is eight strands. Eight strands. And if you can see this, each has not only has eight strands, but has five knots in there. Five knots, eight strands. Okay? Now, what's so significant about that? It equals 39 windings, which means there's 39 moves that they had to do to make this tassel. 39 Windings. Now, if you know anything about Hebrew words and things like that, they have numerical value. They have they uh, uh, each Hebrew word has has numbers attached to it. It means a certain number, okay? And it has numerical value. And uh, the thirty-nine windings in each equals the numerical value of the Hebrew words. The Lord is one. Isn't that cool? The Lord is one. Means one God. <laughs> Means one God. Now, the number 39 has other significance. Call it coincidence, call it God. I think it's God. 
Two other things. The other one, how many stripes did Jesus have on his back? 39 stripes. Hmm. Let me ask you this question. How many category of diseases are there? 39. 39. So you think that's a coincidence or do you think it's God? I, I just don't believe there's coincidences with no God. No. God is so much smarter than us, so much bigger than us, so much more than we can ever even imagine. So there are 39 uh, windings there that has significant meaning in this. When you look at that, you look at the 39 stripes, 39 diseases, and what, and, 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 uh, of, of what all that means, and it means the Lord is one. Yes. Now, the second command that the Lord uh, told them about the garment was to put a ribbon of blue. One of the strands here, if you can see that, is blue. Now, back when they made this, this was a special ink. Uh, they, they think it was like maybe from a snail in the ocean or something like that. And it took like a cabillion snails in this ocean to make like one ounce of, of this blue dye, this special blue dye. And then uh, I did some study on it. It said after the fall uh, that there was an, a, a shortage or there was almost like a, uh, it almost went extinct and they stopped making. So you'll see some prayer shawls. Like that one there does not have a blue strand in it because it was supposed to be this special dye that they had. Uh, I also read on the internet, and I know y'all are just amazed with that that I'm even on the internet, <laughs> that they found that snail again. So that they're making that again. But anyhow, that, I don't know if that's that snail blue or if it's just a dye, you know. But anyhow, but they were to make a ribbon of blue. What was the ribbon of blue for? It was to remind them of their responsibility to obey the law. And that their calling to be a holy people unto the Lord. Amen. To remind them of their calling. Amen. To be a holy people. The, the, uh, a blue represents holiness. Yes. Yes. So it represents holiness. The white represents purity. And it was to remind them of their responsibility to obey the law and to be a holy people unto God. The third thing that the command was not only to remember, but to do all the commands. See, there's one thing to know what to do. There's one thing to know about the law, know about what to do and what not to do, but it's another to do it. See, we know we're supposed to go to church. We know we're supposed to read the Bible. We know that we're supposed to pray, but it's another to do all those things. Yes. We know that we're supposed to be a witness. We know that. But just because you know it doesn't make it right. That's right. You got to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, and today, God still has not changed. He hasn't changed. He's never, he said, I'm the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Forever. He's still the same God. Now, this prayer shawl here is really just a symbol, a sign, as a remembrance. He said, Well, that's Old Testament stuff. God still uses signs or gives us as a remembrance. You can look around and you see all around here. Today, we still have signs and symbols to remind us to be holy, uh -huh. to obey the laws. Yeah. It hasn't changed. What, what are some, some of the things we have today? We have the cross as a reminder. We use the cross today. When we look above the cross, we see that Jesus paid an ultimate price for it to remind us. That's right. That's right. Amen? Yeah. Your Bible. Yes. <laughs> He's still using these things. Yeah. The Bible. You know, we tote the Bible around. We carry the Bible. It's as a reminder. Amen? Amen. What else? The cross that you may wear or the, the stuff that you may wear on as jewelry or whatever. You know, if you're wearing a cross or toting a Bible or, you know, any of those things, you're, you're close. I mean, you're telling people, look, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. I'm this. I'm that. 
I'm different from the world. I'm set apart. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be a man of prayer, a man of, of purpose. Yes. Amen. Or a woman of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Purity, holiness. Yes. That's what it reminds us, what it's supposed to remind us of. This church that you attend or, or wherever you go and, 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 and the churches as you see, mm -hmm. those two are reminders that, hey, I need to be there. Mm -hmm. yes. I need to be a part of that. Or a part of some ministry. Amen? Amen. And there are other things that the... Oh, and, and another one, while I was doing this, he dropped this one into my spirit. Something else that, that we use as a remembrance. Communion. Amen. We do it every month. Just about every month as the Lord leads upon it. To do com communion. It's done as what? As do this in remembrance of who? Jesus. So has God changed? No. no. You may not wear a prayer shawl. You may not tote around a prayer shawl. But you're toting other things. Yes, and the obligation still stands. Yes, that's, right. Amen. that's right. The meaning still stands. Yes, yes. It has not changed. Right. In hundreds of years. It has not changed. And God will not change that. Whether you wear a prayer shawl or not wear a prayer shawl. Now. I want to show you some other things that I did not know about the prayer shawl. One thing is I want to talk to you about the atara or the crown. This part here is called an atara or a crown, which means it's talking about the blessing. There's a blessing that comes with this. Mm -hmm. A blessing. And that's what is here. And it's written, 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 written. <laughs> in Hebrew, and I will try my best to uh, read it to you in Hebrew, and then I'm going to break it down to you in English. And some of this is going to sound familiar to you if you was part of our Seder. Anybody ever been part of a Seder? Ah, you're going to hear some words that, that we heard in the Seder bill. Mm -hmm. And it says this, Baruch Atai Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha'alam Asher Kedishnu Ba Mitzvah Ba Mitzvah Ta Vi Tashanu Lafayet Tzit or Zit Zit. Okay, I'm not very good at it. I should have let Pastor Samuel or somebody else read that. But hey. But we, I remember the Barak Adonai Eloheinu. I got that one. After 12 years of doing Seder, I finally got that one. <laughs> so I got it about halfway through. <laughs> but what it says here, and it's called the blessing. You gotta, this, is, this is where it gets really cool. And the blessing is this. It said, Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us, with his commandments and commanded us to wrap ourselves in the zitzit or the fringes. It's a blessing that comes with it. And I want to put this on. I've been waiting to do this. And when we come to an understanding of how this works, hallelujah. A little different getting used to. But the men would walk around in this mm -hmm. as a sign, as a symbol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when they would have time, when it was time to pray, we've been talking about this on Wednesday nights and, and in our teaching and, and on some Sunday mornings, that the early church prayed mm -hmm. a lot. Yes, yes, yes. They didn't use excuses. They didn't use excuse, I don't have time. I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. They made time to pray. So they carried around, they walked around with this outer garment. On an outer garment or uh, your, the, the prayer shawl. And then when it, when it was time to pray, they would find a spot. It didn't even matter where. If they, they could have been out and they didn't have, they didn't have to go into the temple. didn't have to go there. They did. But they didn't have to. They made time wherever they were. 
And God even tells us today to pray without ceasing, that we need to pray continuously. We, we don't have, you don't have to wait till Sunday to come and pray. That's right. You don't have to wait to dinner to do your God is good, God is great. Amen? You don't have to wait till you go down uh, sleep at night and do your little now nah, lay me down to sleep. We're to pray consistently. And so and when they would pray, they would take, and the first thing they would do is put the blessing upon them. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the blessing would cover them. Yes. I just felt that. And then the blessing would co cover them. And they, 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 they were to place it over their head on the outside just like the tent walls of the tabernacle. So that they would always hang the same way. And they would cover them. Now this gets even cooler. As the Torah was placed over the head, it formed its own tent. Looks like a tent, doesn't it? And they had their own little tabernacle, their own little sanctuary, their own little place of dwelling. Now, what's really cool, as it was stretched out and placed, it would also form wings. Ooh, look at the wings. Hallelujah. It would form wings, would be formed of the garment when the arms are held out. Have you ever heard the scriptures in the Bible about the wings? Mm -hmm. My, my, my. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now, this was a place when they would put this on and have it over their head, this was a place of shelter or protection. They were, this is like their own little shelter, their own little place of protection against the enemy, against the world, against doubt, against uh, uh, disbelief, against fear, against everything. When they went into their little tent and they covered up, they were in their own little place. Just them and God. It was a place of intimacy. It was a place of, of privateness, just you and God. Right, right. Yeah, you, you ever seen, seen a horse, a race horse? They put these little things on to keep them from, from looking one side to to the other. Hello. Yeah. That's right. That's what this does. It blocks out all distractions, so that nothing, nothing hinders, no excuse, nothing. Mm, mm, mm. It was a place spent apart from anyone or anything else. You were totally focused on God. Amen. It became your own little prayer closet. Thank you. And we're still commanded today to go into our prayer closet. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. Mm. You getting something yet? Oh, yes. Is this clicking or what? Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, go with me to Psalms 91. I want to read this song. This is, I love Psalms 91, but after I learned about the prayer show, I really love Psalms 91. I told you that this prayer show was throughout the Bible. And here in Psalms 91, 1, I want you to read this here with me. And I want to read this here to you. And I want you to follow along. He who dwells in the shelter. I just told you what the shelter was. That place of privacy. That intimacy. He dwells in the tent. The little tent. The shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> I will say in the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings. Yes. 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 Woo! Yes. 
victory this week. Thank you. Mm. you will find refuge. <laughs> His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Man, I am so teary-eyed. I can hardly see. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read it from up there because I cannot read this little print. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a place of intimacy. A private time between you and God. Blocked from all outside. Nothing, nothing can penetrate. Nothing can get in there. It clears your mind, your thoughts. You say, how does that work? It's a, it's a, it, 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 it's a faith thing. It's a faith thing. You say, well, I'd feel silly. I'd rather feel silly than beat up. Amen. I'm just saying. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Now I want to get a little bit more deeper. Can I go deeper? Yes. I haven't overloaded you yet, have I? I want to go deeper. I want to talk about the tassels. A little bit more about the tassels. We already talked about the 39 windings. Now I want to talk about the tassels. If you were to count every one of these knots, including every tassel, there are 613 knots altogether. 613. Now, if you don't believe me, you can take eight the time and count them. Uh, don't know how they did it, but there's 613 knots. The way that they tied it, it's pretty cool here. 613. Why 613 knots? Why? Why does that have to do with anything? Well, there are 613 laws in the Law of Moses, the Book of Moses, the five, the first five books, the uh, the Torah. 613 laws. Now let me tell you how those laws are broken down into two parts. The first part is the probations, which are, there's 365 probations, which means these are the laws that says, thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. But pastor, I thought there was only 10. Wrong. <laughs> 365 thou shalt not. There are 248 affirmations which are thou shalt. Means you, you can do this, but you can't do that. 248 things you can do, 365 things you can't do. Now, if you're a brain, brainiac, or you can do math in your head, add the two, two together, what does it come up to? 613. Pretty cool, eh? Yes. 613. Now, it gets cooler. Now, with these tassels on there, as they would walk around with these on there, and because they, they were on the four corners, and because you can really see those, can't you? You're walking around, man, those things are just a flipping and flopping and moving. They were to wear these on the corners of their garment in full view of everyone. This is in full view of everyone to see. This is who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I do. I'm a man of prayer. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in the promises. I'm a man that obeys the Word of God. That's what, it, that's what they're saying. And it was in plain view of everyone to see, including the person wearing it. Just like today, when we towed our Bibles, everybody sees it. Including the one carrying it. As a remembrance. And that's what that did. As a remembrance. What was cool, I was, as I did some study, there, 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 there were those that would go into their prayer closet and, and their time of prayer. And they would literally hang on yeah. to the tassels. Yeah. Yeah. And they would pray fervently. Believing God to move mightily in their life. 
They were believing for the promises that God said, the blessing that would come upon them and for their children and their children's children to come. Thank you. And they would become very passionate, not ritualistic. The problem today is people are too real and ritualistic in their prayer time. Amen. Even in their reading time. People have a tendency to become ritualistic. It's very easy to do that. What does that mean, Pastor? That means you pray without meaning. You pray without purpose. You pray because Pastor Tommy told me to. It's an essay to pray. I gotta pray. It says I gotta pray. I'll pray. But if there's no passion, there's no meaning, there's no intimacy, there's no quiet time in that. You know, there's a, if we're talking about quiet time. Not only do you do all the talking, but you need to hear also. There's a time to be just quiet and just hang on. And as you're doing that, God is going to speak to you. God's dad never spoke to me. Maybe you've never got quiet before the Lord. Because if you'll get quiet before the Lord, He'll speak to you. He'll speak to you audibly. He'll speak to you through your word. He'll use other individuals mm -hmm. to speak to you. There's even a story in here where He used a mule to talk to a man. Come on. Yes. Just saying. Yep. I don't want my dog talking to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, <my word. laughs> And what they, they were doing, when they would carry this and, and, and wear this on them, they were making a decree. Now last week I talked about the decrees. You know, we've made decrees throughout our life. And anytime, have you ever you said amen? means so be it. That's a decree unto the Lord. You're obligated to that. You're held to that. You're held accountable to that standard. Amen? Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, you will not withheld. You will not be able to do it in yourself. That's right. You will not be able to uphold your end of the deal unless you give yourself totally over to God. And you Amen. take time to get to know Him. You get time in, in private. You, you get time to, 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 to talk to Him, to get to know the Father's heart. Until you do that, you will not be able to walk faithfully the way that you should walk. Amen. Yeah. You can't do it. It's impossible. That's right. It's totally impossible mm -hmm. to do it in yourself. You'll fall. You'll slip. You'll mess up. Amen. Amen. You say, Pastor, well, what does all this have to do with today? That's Old Testament. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Turn with me to Malachi chapter 4. Lord. Get good. Malachi chapter 4. Starting at verse 1, and I want to read verses 1 through 4. Hallelujah. I'm sure glad we got that screen up there so I can see that better. It says, Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, mm, 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 the Son of righteous, Righteousness will rise with what? Yeah. Healing yeah. in yeah. His wings. <laughs> and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Then you will trample down the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law. Hmm? Remember the words. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. Now that is not just for them. It is for us today as well. For us to remember all. Not, I'm not going to use the word unfortunately. We have more of it than just the first five books. <laughs> we now have from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. 
We have the Holy Word of God. We have it all the way through. We have more accountability than what they even had in that day. God holds us more accountable today because we're supposed to know more, understand more, and ultimately because Jesus came. Amen. Jesus came, paid a price so that we can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship, that one-on-one -on -one intimacy. Amen. That we could go boldly into the throne room of God. Hallelujah! Boldly! Yes. No more holding back, no more excuses, no more uh, uh, reservation of, of going in, but to go boldly. Yes. And we talked about that, the sprinkling of the blood. Yes. Ooh, we need to be sprinkled fresh every day with the blood of Jesus so that we can go boldly with a clear conscience. You'll yes. find that in Hebrew. With a clear conscience and, and, and no, no doubt, no fear, no disbelief, no excuses. After this statement here was made, it was about 400 years. There was no prophets. There was nothing said for four. There was silence in the church. God was not happy with the people. He wasn't happy. They weren't being obedient. But there's always a remnant of people that held on. Always, God, always, and I've been saying this for a long time, God uses a remnant of people Amen. that carry it on. And I want to talk to you one about one. I want to end up with this in Mark chapter 5 about somebody that remembered the words. See, when we remember the words, the Bible says that we're to remind God of His words. Right. In order to remind God of His words, you got to know what they are. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can't remind Him of something you don't know. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Mark chapter 5, I want to start at verse uh, 24. Now, this is a story where Jesus came over and he meets Jairus. And he, Jairus comes up to him and he says, My little daughter's dying when you come. So Jesus is going with him. But on his way to Jairus' house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love this story. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet of steady, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, oh yeah, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched <laughs> and touched his cloak, touched the hem of his garment. Yes, yes, yes. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes. See, she remembered the promise, what was said in Malachi, that there would be healing in his wings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. That there would be healing in his wings. She said, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around uh, and asked, who touched me? Who touched me? He said, they said, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched you? <laughs> but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembled with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. She knew that there would be healing in his wings. She knew that if I just touched the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Amen. I will be healed. Now, there's a whole lot more to do that story. You understand, she was, no, she was considered unclean. Mm -hmm. She was not allowed to be out. Right. 
She wasn't allowed to be there. She had to fight through a crowd of people. But she had come to a place in herself and says, I remember the promise. And I know if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I will press in, press through, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do to me. I'm getting healed today. I will be healed today. Thank you, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. She could have been stoned. Mm -hmm. In a way, <laughs> whether they kill me <laughs> or they heal me, <laughs> today's my day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going for it. And I'm pressing in. Yeah. And I'm not going to give up. I don't care. And I'm not going to give up. Okay. And when she touched his garment instantly, I understand it's not the garment. That's right. It's not the garment. It's what represents what God said it would be. Yes. It was faith that healed her. And that's what He tells her. He says, your faith you, has healed. He didn't say the, the titsies, uh, the, the zitzits, or whatever you call them, the titsits. Yeah. That, that ain't what healed her. It was the faith that healed her. Yes. And then He told her to go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Nothing is impossible mm. for faith today. Right. Amen. God is moved by faith. Yes. Yes. He is always moved by faith. Yes. When you move in faith and believe, and believe. God will move. Yes. Amen. When we come for healing, or we come for deliverance, or we come for whatever, and we go to, to the Lord in prayer, and even in our time, in our prayer time, we are to believe what we're praying for. I, I believe that's one of the biggest downfalls today in our praying. We don't really believe what we're praying. We talk about healing, but do we really believe in healing? We talk about salvation, but do we really believe? We talk about deliverance. We talk about the words in here that says, me and my house. Mm -hmm. You know, and we talk about, you know, that not, not only I would be saved, but my children would be saved. We talk about it. But do we have faith to believe it? Yes. Mm -hmm. See, that's where God moves by faith. Yes. Yes. He hasn't changed. God is still moved by faith today. And I'm going to close with this last scripture, Mark 9, 23. This is again Jesus speaking. He says, everything is possible for him who believes. Yes. Everything. everything. Not some things. Everything. Not most things. Everything yes. is impossible. Everything is possible. Let's pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know that you're calling your people to a higher level. A higher standard, Father God. A people that would return to holiness, obedience, mm -hmm. Father God, of who you are. Those that cry out your name, Father God, may we do our part first. That we would be obedient unto you, Father God. We know that you are a God that cannot lie. But your word clearly says, if you do, I will do. It's not the other way around. Father God, help us to be that people. A people of prayer. A people of passion. A people of faith. A people of obedience, Father God. In every area of our life. May we surrender everything to you. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can will you come? Hallelujah.